Hello, participants. Welcome to all. Are you all there? Hello, yeah. Yeah. So let's start. So all participants in between, they can add themselves uh, in between. So let's start. Thanks. And thank you to all of you. So Dr. VP Sharma, Country Head Delivery from Data Risk Technologies. And here we are having one uh, webinar on this, this AWS Clouds. So this uh, basic, uh, uh, this is a webinar specifically to the basic understanding of career options and understanding of AWS. How it works, what is cloud, what's need of clouds and other things. So let's start. So the point is, what is need of the cloud and how we reach it? So we just go back to the history part of it. So if you just go back for some of the things, point is, or if just take an example of yourself. Today we have a lot of data and we manage the data and thing is what we need to manage the data. So we're starting from the term data. You may have heard about the terminologies like uh, uh, data is the uh, today's crud oil. You may have heard about some of the names or some of the people. So here is the point. To, to store your files, you need some storage. That is generally called hard disk. To manage your records, you need some RDBMS systems like Oracle. You can make certain to certain set of operations for the, that we call processing units, unit CPUs. That is the currently that we all know everything about that. And the last thing is the sharing of the backup. We need certain devices like pen drives and other things. These are the things that we generally need in day-to-day -day life. If we go back to the history, the history, so what options we had. If you take an example, we had a store for the storage, we generally use the hard disk. For the processor, we had a very old uh, your processors. We heard about 8086 series, i386, 486, 586, then came the Pentium, then came Titanium, like that. So if we think about the very old stage, there for this flop, we use floppies for the sharing and about the backup purpose. This is the floppy which contain which can have the maximum size of 1.44 megabytes, and this contains the maximum size of 1.2 megabytes. For that, we have certain set of drives. You may heard about the floppy drives. This is the, for the bigger size for this one. And the, this one is for the small size. So this is the old days, if you can remember. For the database operations, we had the one software mainly used at that time called DBase. And then we came the Fox Pro, then came Oracle and other, other things. And the one board is required here that we call motherboards, where we fix up all these things, all your hard disk, processors, and other things, RAM, and other things that get connected on this board. And this board gets placed inside the cabinet. And using that, we use the whole system. This is the very old days we can think it. So we, here also we have the storage, we have the processing power, we have the backup powers, we have the processing units, and we have the database. So these are all things that we need in the very old time. The so things get changed after some time, and some of the things get replaced. Just see here. Now, thing is, earlier we had the floppies, then came your CDs or DVDs. Even your DBs are yeah, replaced with uh, some bigger databases like Oracle, your MySQL, your SQL Server, and other things. And your devices get changed with from floppy just here. We have the floppies now. We have our laptops and desktop with the CD drive. Maybe some of you are you have seen it, not I don't know because in the latest mobiles, latest laptops we don't have all these things. So this is just removed. That will give the higher version of this. Then this thing has been replaced. So you can just see your backup. Mainly these things are still there, but your backup has been changed. So now we have the CDs, more capacity and more better devices. After some time, all these things are again gone. Just see it here. Your database, which were there with that need to install on your local machines, have been replaced by one more global server that's called Oracle Cloud. So we can put your data somewhere outside your machine and you can access data from any time, from anywhere. And your CDs can replace with uh, one more uh, device called USB drives or your pen drives. So again, this are used for the sharing purpose. But here, if you see in this machine, there's no CD drive in this. You have the USB ports, but though no CD drives. So what happens? It becomes thinner and thinner. The thing's going to change. But still, we have the storage. We have the CPU units that are the same. But things are going to change at this side of area. If you can see, in this side, hardware side of area. If you see this again, what happens after some time? This, even your pen drive has gone. What we have now, we can have certain drives, like Google drives. Even today, we can do so many things without even any laptops. We can have some small devices. 
So we can access the data, we can put our backup data here, we can put our DBMS data here, we can do processing power here, and this processing power will come to this node. Then, where the storage units? This is the thing, how the things are changing, how the world is going to change. If you see this for the business, that is for the personal use, if we see the business, we had the one server, single server model earlier, so we can have the one machine, this is connected with the database, so many other people like web designers, web launch clients and so many things like PLC machines, I think, they get all connected with the one server. If something goes wrong with the server, or the, nobody can access the data from here. Then what they did? Then they created one centralized system, the distributed set of models, where they had the one control server, then they had the distributed servers, and this, this, these clients can connect it only for this server. If something goes wrong with this machine, but still these things are machines are working in that case. So things are again, this is multiple server model. Then came the letter in this. And then now, if we say the need of today, this is called cloud computing. In case of cloud computing here, you just have your machine, which could be your, uh, your mobile, that could be your laptop, that could be your desktop. You just need a router or switch to connect to that particular machine and just internet connection and no need to have the servers in your local machine. And all the things get placed somewhere outside your place and you can put all these servers. This environment is called cloud environment where we can have your servers, we can have all database applications, we can have our uh, software applications, all your database, RDBMS, that can be placed outside your machine. And you can access all those information just using your internet connection, having some router and switch, and you can connect to other devices. So we are here to discuss all these. Things. So this is how the world gets changed. So if we can just go back, so this is the history now. You know, maybe, maybe some of you have not seen all this thing in your life, but we have used this thing in some somewhere in 1985 or something that we started a career from here only. So we are used to store data, then came the DVD and then pen drives and other thing. And today people are using all these. So suppose you buy a pen drive or say 16 GB, you have to pay around 300 rupees something. And but if you have Google Drive, 15 GB of data is giving free of cost. So we can have all these kind of things. But main purpose of what why we are using all these things? What is the main purpose of all these things? So if we go through this way. Then here is the point, what is the component of cloud? The whole component of this cloud system is divided into three main parts. One is called IASS, PASS, and CSAS. This is called SaaS. This is called infrastructure. If you just see the full form, so this infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. These are the three core areas of the components where the, the cloud. So the thing is, how we get it? Just take an example, infrastructure. In the case of infrastructure with the hardware, we have the network devices, with the storage, with the virtual machines, with the containers, all these, like you may have heard about the name of OpenStack. So this is an example of your kind, you know, maybe about the name of the Dockers and the thing. The Dockers comes in this category, so the platform as you said. There are the GitHub, Kubernetes, uh, Docker, they're all different uh, deployment platforms where we can deploy other things. We call them PaaS, platform as a service. Then there are so many softwares we can directly access, like billing softwares we can use it. There's so many things, softwares, like you can if it, take an example, I'll show you some of the software that you can use directly. Like suppose you want to use the Oracle, you need, there's no need to install Oracle on a machine. You can directly access from the remote servers. There's so many softwares are available online. There's no need to download and install on your local machines. We can use another model of SaaS, software as a service. You can pay for that and the rental kind of service. Then here are the six different uh, cloud platforms which is available in the market. If you say this Amazon, we write AWS that we are talking about right now. Then others are Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, Alibaba Cloud, Oracle Cloud, IBM Cloud. There are six major clouds. It will be like that with the hundreds of other clouds also. But these are the six major ones which is available in the market. But point is who is the leader and how and how we can find it out. Who is the leader and how they are working in the best in the market. So this is the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Maybe you have heard about this is Gartner in, in Corporation who does all this kind of uh, uh, research and things. This is a research published in July 2019. This is the latest one, the last report they have published. If you see this report, it has only six uh, best services they have taken. And if you see here this quadrant, this is niche, niche players, visionaries, and challenges are the leaders. If you see the list of leaders, here it comes your image on. Then comes your Microsoft, Azure, then comes your Google Cloud, DC, we say, and then comes Alibaba, Oracle, and IBM. So they are the, just coming to this area, but they are the all three leaders which are in the market. So if you do any, uh, if you have knowledge of these three clouds and you go to the market with their certification, their knowledge, 
then you get a good market and good client career you can have it so this is the one of thing that everybody must be knowing it. so there are six major clouds that we have and the, this amazon is the leader in that then comes to what is the different the major components of aws because here we are talking about today aws this is understanding the of this aws has many components but at the three or four components we are talking about one is called amazon s3 S3 stands for because these are different names, EC2, RDS, they have the names, but they are actually very simple abbreviations. Like S3 stands for simple storage service. This is used for sharing and backup. So, whatever role the pay or pen drive does, uh, so the same role is done by this thing, S3. This is for the storage and backup. You can do the online storage. So, this is the combination of your hard disk and the pen drive both. The thing point is that. So, EC2 stands for elastic computer cloud so this is again your computer system but this is on the cloud the second thing is this is elastic elastic means suppose if you have a computer at your home which contains 8 gb of ram and you need you are you want to run certain program or certain game which requires 32 gb of ram then how will you do you need to make a change but this is this cloud is elastic that means if you want to increase your ram anytime you can increase it you want to decrease it you can decrease it Suppose today you have the requirement 32 GB, you can ask for 32 GB. Tomorrow if you have the requirement 2 GB only, you can reduce it to 2 GB. That's why it could be called elastic. So this kind of processing power you can achieve using EC2. So this is what we call elastic computer cloud or EC2. Third is called imagine RDS. The RDS stands for relational database service. So the, whenever this is just like Oracle, your MySQL, where we need the relational data. So this is for the record management. The three core services we have here, S3, EC2 and RDS. So this is for the database, data sharing and backups. This is for the processing, this is record management. Second thing, one more thing is the cloud infrastructure use the concept of virtualization. Where same servers can be allocated to multiple businesses. Take an example, suppose we have the thousands of machines, thousands of CPUs, they are not used by only single business. These systems get divided to the different, different companies, maybe your Netflix, maybe Facebook or some other company. We call them private, virtual private clouds or VPCs. So the whole system, whole infrastructure is divided for the different different vendors or different businesses. We call them such thing as called virtual private clouds or VPCs. So this is the overall architecture. You can have an idea. So this is AWS cloud basic architecture. So this is the suppose this is overall AWS model. In this way, the VPCs. This VPC could be different for different companies, but they can have this. Same database here. The one goes database, database S3, or this is for the storage. And this is EC2 and this is RDS. This is how the things get, get connected. So whenever processor wants to do something, some kind of processing, the data taken from, from S3. This contains all your images, videos, and other kind of files. This is basically file system. So you want to store your relational data, your records, you manage over in RDS, and the processing power is done by EC2. So here is I have written set of the things. So Amazon S3 uses for store your files like images and videos. Take an example, your uh, say Netflix, arcade in the use case of Netflix, they use a lot of images and videos and do the live streaming and here the whole case in this. Amazon EC2 is uses, used to, to provide the computing power. This is for the, this works like a CPU, you can think of it like a CPU. Amazon RDC uses to store relational data or the records. So this is the whole thing that we had discussed earlier. So if you compare the, the things that you had, so just go to the first part of it, then now you can understand this. So this storage and this pen drive is done by S3. This is your EC2 that we're using and the relational data that we had, the Oracle cloud, you can think of, or DBS or database, but the, your relational database that is handled by RDS. So this is the comparison that you can do just for your idea. So this is your RDS for the, your data is a kind of database, relational database. This is for your computing power. And these are the full form I think that you get it now. This is Elastic Computer Cloud. This is Simple Storage Service, Relational Database Service, and we the one called Virtual Private Clouds. So different companies will have the different VPCs. There are core features of clouds. One is called high availability. That's why we are using clouds. Take an example, so you have your computers at your places. Then what happens? If something got your data gets crashed or some of your machine get crashed, your RAM is not working or something. So that's not happens in case of clouds. Clouds is highly available. Point is how it's available, we'll discuss more in that. Second is the fault tolerant. 
If something goes wrong with your operation, while operations automatically gets recovered by some of your EC2, your EC2 kind of things in your, your uh, clouds. It's called fault and this again discussed in this. Second is scalability. Scalability is a very important thing. Suppose you have your one server in your machine, one uh, machine at your hand or your in company that have been say uh, 8 GB of RAM, say 16 GB of RAM, some of the hard disk. And something goes wrong. So, so today, suppose you have 10 clients. And tomorrow, suppose you have the 30 clients and your clients are going to increase. What will happen to your machine? Your machine will be shut down or they're not even working anymore. So what do you need? So we need a system. If we have only one client or with a lack of clients, our system should be stable. So that comes the point of scalability. Scalability means whatever number of clients we have. You take an example, Netflix. Suppose today they have 100 users. Maybe tomorrow they can have 10 lakhs users. Take this example, due to COVID and other issues, maybe some, some of the people are not using your TV channels, they are going to Netflix. So what happened? The people are, more and more people are going to engage into the Netflix. So what will happen? So they need scalability so that whatever number of users they have, their system should not be collapsed. That's why the term is for scalability. Fourth important point is elasticity. So today they have 100 users, tomorrow uh, they have 10,000 users. Maybe after when the COVID goes on, and they maybe just have the 2000 users or say 1500 users. So a system will automatically adjust to the upper layer or the lower layer. The term is called elasticity. And thirdly, how the elasticity gets managed? For that, they have the concept of instance. Okay, you have some questions? Okay, I'll, give, I'll, I'll just take this session. So I'll do one thing, though these questions I'll take in after the last, uh, when you just finish the session. So I'll give her the, uh, around 15, 20 minutes for this kind of discussion. Okay, thank you for this. I, I'll just discuss this question. Okay, these are the things. Instance is what? Like take an example, you have the one CPU, you can, the, you can get a duplicate copy of this, the same, this is called instance. So same thing happens there also. So we have these five terminologies to be discussed in detail in this. See here. What AWS archives highly available? What we call highly availability? So this just take the example. I mentioned cloud as many secure data centers because whenever we say cloud, cloud is nothing just is with this can't be without machines. So they have they have so their data centers and there's a one more called availability zones around the globe to serve you all. So what happens in this? Just see this is the some other infrastructures they have shown their websites. And if you just have an idea about that, I'll show you the live example of the world how the data centers get created and how the clients are built. This is an example for the Google Cloud, not from Amazon. So just to test your uh, idea. So it's a five minutes video. You can just have an idea of how the things get work. Just see this. A data center is the brains of the internet, the engine of the internet. It is a giant building with a lot of power, a lot of cooling, and a lot of computers. It's row upon row upon row of machines, all working together to provide the services that make Google function. I love building and operating data centers. I'm Joe Cava, Vice President of Data Centers at Google. I'm responsible for managing the teams globally that design, build, and operate Google's data centers. We're also responsible for the environmental health and safety, sustainability and carbon offsets for our data centers. This data center here in, in South Carolina is one node in a larger network of data centers all over the world. Of all the employees at Google, a very, very small percentage of those employees are authorized to even enter a data center campus. The men and women that run these data centers and keep them up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they are incredibly passionate about what they're doing. In layman's terms, what do I do here? I typically refer to myself as the herder of cats. And I'm an engineer, hardware site operations manager. We keep the lights on and we enjoy doing it. And they work very hard. So we like to provide them a fun environment where they can also play hard as well. We just went past the three million man hour mark for zero lost time incidents. Three million man hours is a really long time. And with the number of people that we have on site, that is an amazing accomplishment. I think the Google data centers really can offer a level of security that almost no other company can match. We have a information security team that is truly second to none. You, you have the expression, they wrote the book on that. Well, there are many of our information security team members that have really written the books on 
best practices in information security. Protecting the security and the privacy of our users' information is our foremost design criteria. We use various layers of higher level security the closer into the center of the campus you get. So just to enter this campus, my badge had to be on a pre-authorized access list. Then to come into the building, that was another level of security. To get into the secure corridor, which leads to the data center, that's a higher level of security. And the data center and the networking rooms are the highest level of security. And the technologies we use are different. Like for instance, in our highest level areas, we even use underfloor intrusion detection via laser beams. So I'm going to demonstrate going into the secure corridor now. One, I have to be on the authorized list with my badge. And then two, I use a biometric iris scanner to verify that it truly is me. Okay, here we are on the data center floor. The first thing that I notice is that it's a little warm in here. It's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Google runs our data centers warmer than most because it helps with the efficiency. You'll notice that we have overhead power distribution. Coming from the outside yard, we bring in the high voltage power, distribute across the bus bars to all of the customized bus taps that are basically plugs where we plug in all the extension cords. All of our racks don't really look like a traditional server rack. These are custom designed and built for... Just a second. A data center custody process for managing those drives from the time that they're checked out to the server to they're brought to an ultra secure cage where they're erased and crushed if necessary. So any drive that can't be verified is 100% clean, we crush it first and then we take it to an industrial wood chipper where it's shredded into these little pieces like this. In the time that I've been at Google for almost six and a half years now, we have changed our cooling technologies at least five times. Most data centers have air conditioning units along the perimeter walls that force cold air under the floor that then raises up in front of the servers and cools the servers. In our solution, we take the server racks and we butt it right up against our air conditioning unit. We just use cool water flowing through those copper coils that you see there. So the hot air from the servers is contained in that hot aisle. It raises up, passes across those coils where the heat from the air transfers to the water in those coils. And then that warm water is then brought outside the data center to our cooling plant where it is cooled down through our cooling towers and returned back to the data center. And that process just repeats over and over again. To me, the thing that amazes me about Google and the data centers is the pace of innovation and always challenging the way we're doing things. So when people say that innovation in a certain area is done, that we've kind of reached the pinnacle of what can be achieved, I just laugh. So this was just an idea. If you talk about the AWS, they have the many data centers around the world. If you take an example of Mumbai in India, they have launched in 2016. Like that there's so many data centers they are have, having all these things. And here the one term you just see, it's the availability zones. There are three zones in this. That means if something goes wrong in the one place, so the whatever data you put in the Mumbai, that get placed, that get connected at the two different other places. So if something goes wrong in Mumbai, the data is taken from those other places because then availability zones. If you talk about your best 10 customers for AWS, you can see the list. This is just today I've taken this list. This is Netflix. They're doing the business of something say $19 million with, they're just paying uh, to AWS. The Twitch, LinkedIn, Facebook, Turner, BBC, Bidu, ESPN. These are some of the customers of your AWS. So Netflix, you can see this is one of the top customers. So that are taking the case study of Netflix. Take this example. When you see this video, the screen that comes up to you from the Netflix, when you log on into your account or Netflix. So what they have in this, they have certain set of images. That's basically a web page, the website. Then there's a certain set of video files behind this. So how, where they we place all these. This is Amazon S3, this storage. So your video file goes to your storage. 
your all your account details when you sign up and you pay do thing and do your login and login password and other thing they goes to a relational database that is called amazon rds then we do some live streaming so data is taken from s3 by some processor so this processing is done by ec2 so ec live streaming part is take handled by your live streaming part is by ec2 and but we can have the lakhs of customers for that we need the different instances of ec2 we call them ec2 instances this is done by user handling so this is the, the basic scenario used by netflix in case of aws see this example how you use the aws cloud so suppose this is the one user i said earlier also you just need internet connection and you get connect with the cloud and the things are done and that's why the things are there you don't need any any tv broadcast system or anything in case of your uh, netflix so suppose there are so many users so this is your aws and this is vpc of netflix we are using so suppose here in this case see this in this vpc we have amazon ec2 this contains common use for the web hosting this is contain your website and the things this is for rds the common uses customer account information and inventory catalogs and here if you see this this is the overall the s2 uh, okay i am not just given s2 in this this s3 in this but so i'll just show you in s3 and other things so this is the basic architecture if you see here this if you increase the number of users so in our users what happens so different instances get created to serve all these clients so that your speed you are not decrease in this case so what so data get verified all these instances are taken from data common data user data from this rds and they are serving the data is there the files are taken from s3 and the serve by to the users so there because different different instances and the term very important term is scalability so every customer of aws cloud has its own vpn so this is netflix has a different vpc facebook has a different vpc and other things like that and we have the so many instances of vc2 depending on your customer base so more customers you have more instances you can create for your ec2 to handle all these requests so your speed should not be decreased or you should not be uh, just going to puzzle when you are using all these things so thing is what happens if your ec2 gets filled maybe sometimes this is a software software can be filled so what happens if suppose this user is connected with this ec2 and this ec2 getting retrieved from here and s3 and something goes wrong with this ec2 instance so what happens this this instance get filled so vpc automatically the system get transferred this request to this one so if we just simulate this one so see this example so earlier this user was connected with this instance but now this is connected to this instance so the term is known as fault tolerant so your cloud systems are generally made as part of fault tolerant in this case so how we can say so aws manages all these things automatically internally so control is automatically transferred to other ec2 instance is the things gets resolved and then other instance with this get connected and to other instance that this is the overall idea so when a number of users get decreased instance get automatically decreased what happens there's a one console pay as you use so more number of users you can increase the capacity the less number of users you can decrease the capacity the term is known as elasticity so this is again very important so whenever this these number of instances get increase or decrease as to the requirement of the customer more users you have you can ask for the more instances and more resources and if you the less number of users you can decrease at any moment of time it's not that way that you just uh, take in some some space on the rent uh, for the say uh, to, to, for so many people and for the 10000 you are paying and today you just need only one room but still you have to pay 10000 rupees so that's like that but if we have in case elasticity this is pay as you use so what we can do more resource be required we hire for the more and there's a two kind of models could be there's a pay for use and one the fund by for the limit you can also set the initial limits also and but for that you have to pay monthly rent for that particular you know, limits take a very simple example if you buy you take some home on the rent with a four bedroom set for every month you need to pay four bed, uh, rent for four, four bedrooms but if you have, have an hotel today you need one room you can just pay for the one room tomorrow you need four rooms you can buy you can take the four rooms so this is that kind of service that comes cloud services and that's why cloud services are very very important now if we take about the career options and things what what are the things we can have in this so this is the the area or we can say different career options offered by aws or there are different certifications offered by aws 
Just see this example from where we start with this. Got foundational courses with associate level courses, we have the professional level courses, and again we have the specialties in that. If you see this, there's a foundational level with a cloud practitioner from where the things get started. Because AWS certified cloud practitioner, this is the from where the thing gets started. These guys only uh, not to be very highly technical. Even uh, your graduate people can do all these kind of things. There's no engineering other things required in that. But this is again a startup career because cloud is a growing area. IT infrastructure is a growing area. So wherever you go, you can't live without cloud now. You would take an exam daily or like so. What your images go? You go to Google Cloud and so things get without cloud, you can't live today. So that cloud is going to day by day increase day by day. So whatever devices you are having, your you may have about internet, internet of things, IoT. So this IoT devices are sending data so much. You may have heard about your data, say smart cities. So smart cities are also sending so much of data. So in that case, what will do? You need clouds. Without cloud, you can't handle that data which is coming from your IoT devices. So for that, you the basic startup, your career goes to be the cloud practitioner. This is the smallest foundational certification that your AWS offers. Then you can go to more better one that's called associate level. And here again, three ones like if you just see this uh, solution architect associate, then we have the sysops. Today we have what we call DevOps, then with the sysops. This is a DevOps, so development plus operation get mixed, and the system and this operation get mixed. SysOps administrator associate this is called associate level and then we can have the developer here we need the knowledge of programming so they just sort of the engineering kind of background they look up in this developers for the operations this is there's no need to, to have some programming more skills but for the architect level is yeah you need some more skills in that some networking skills and other things there are some more skills are required this is the second level this is a foundational level this is associate level then we go some some bit higher we call professional level so what they need, just see the requirements here. Six months of fundamental AWS cloud industry knowledge. Here is for this, to certify this. Then here they need one year of experience solving problems and implementing solution using AWS cloud. And then you can do this. That means even if you're not any certification, you can start learning about that. So once you have the concept, you can start working in some small companies, or some small cloud companies, you can start joining as a, uh, your trainee, or you can start uh, something like uh, some some people you can go to any company. There are so many local cloud practitioners also available. You can join that, and you can contact them. So so once you do some practice with this, so you can go to associate level, and then after two years of experience, then you can move to the professional level. And here we have the solution architect professional and DevOps engineering professional. So DevOps the one of the growing area here. We have the knowledge of development plus operations both. So this is why we can go into infrastructure and we can the development, we can mix both the things. This is the career which is going to be moved very fast. So people are coming to this area. Even today we have some, this is the common areas of your AWS certifications. But today we have some specialized ones also because the new, new things are coming up. You matter data analytics, your say machine learning, artificial intelligence, AI is also having some so many kind of securities. Again, we're going to cloud security is again an essential part, advanced networking part. So all the data will I take an example, RDS. So today in, in your AWS, we can put any database of your choice. So how to manage all those, those, those databases. So many things are coming up in this. So if you are, suppose you're a data scientist, you can go to this area. Suppose you are as a machine, you are working AI or machine learning, you can have such specialization in that area also. You want to go in cyber security or you want to cloud security, you can go to the AWS and certified security specialist. Any choice. So there's a lot of career opportunities are there in AWS. So only thing is how to start with this. So here we can have, again offer all these type of kind of things. So we have we need such and such of trainees. We we brought all these kind of things because we need a good manpower to us also. So we train those guys and we place as per our requirements also. This is one of the core areas. So this has been basic knowledge about. The, how the things are going to happen and what are the five these five terminologies to understand in this one is high availability so how the things are because we have a lot of data centers so they, those data centers contain their all data and there's the three data centers uh, minimum parallelly they provide the things so something or the one place the data gets automatically taken from other place second thing is one instance uh, is instance or something get failed the data get automatically transferred to other one second is scalability whatever number you just you have they all should be served that's called scalability. Then we have velocity. You today we have the number you just less, tomorrow you can more, then again less. So all the things, the automatic things get adjusted. The term is not elasticity. 
and then instances something so we can create the to serve more number of users we create different instances of ec2 we call them ec2 instances this is a basic idea about the terminologies we have in this architecture so this is awsc then vpc the vpc with ec2 rdc and s3 this is a basic architecture of basic understanding of ews clouds so we must be knowing what is need of cloud from where we get started so if we go the very old days the here are the things that we need so we need file system we need records we need to certain do certain set operations then we need to share and backup so this is the history from where we get started how they get moved and how the things get started now so we can today we are using so many things maybe you have an account of say microsoft outlook you are using max you, you may be using azure in the background maybe you are using storing some data in oracle so using oracle clouds so today you may be interacting but you maybe you don't know but you may be interacting so many clouds every day so you can just check it out what are the features are provided by different clouds and how only not just to just have an idea there are three things are this required infrastructure how the infrastructure going to use as a service today you have so many other things also like say blockchain as a service you made so many new terms are coming up in this world right now. so day by day so new terminology are going to happen you can ask i'll show you some of the more example in this just a second may see i'll show you one example you can just see this example see this this is adobe.com this site where this is xd software we create uh, your flow of your certain projects suppose you want to create a flow of some project this you you can directly use this software online this is online we are not bought any this any we are not download any software this so for that we are creating the things live so this is basically uh, we say software as a service this is saas kind of things take an example oracle earlier what we do we go to oracle website download the software it's all on your local machine and then run your sql queries but there's no need you can directly go to liveskill.oracle.com you run any queries you put your data you test the things you can do so many things in live so the things are going to change the world is going to change so all these things are going to happen in this so you, if you know about all these things you can do, do do something better in that so this is some idea how the things get involved and what uh, how the things if you go to this uh, amazon website so the, i have given shared some of the links also is a link where you can uh, search all these things and i have shared this uh, video i have shared the uh, url of this video so i'll share uh, with you all these things also so if you want to be in this presentation so you can get it so the different data centers which is available for the aws then one of the major clients that are available for the aws then the case study how the things get maintained by netflix this is some of the ideas this at least the terminologies what is fault tolerant means scalability elasticity these terminology must be clear and these are career options some more things i have just taken so aws is not just only storage they are just providing certain more services like iot services we are talking about so we are doing some, some iot project or are using some iot services they are also given like free rtos AWS or Greengrass. There's some of the tools that provide by uh, your AWS also. So you can download all these these things, or you can online use all these services your AWS. So AWS is just not only for the storage for the clouds. They provide so many other services also. You may be heard about the latest thing called blockchain. So they provide certain set of services. Even we can have some solutions or the blockchain solution. We can deploy on directly on AWS or Dell's containers. That is also possible. Simply we can do all these things. so whatever latest technology available today they get all integrated into aws so this is very very important thing you can just go there use try to use these accounts and the set tutorials are free of cost available for the learn and the so many things uh, they have their own academy aws academy where you can start with learning all these thing without paying any single pen so you can just learn a thing for certification you need to pay the charges for the learning most of the things are free of cost so if you want i'll share with you the things so we can all you can have the urls and the thing you can be in each of the project so that we can if you have certain query we can solve your queries and if you require some of the data that we can handle all these things for that you can just note down some of the your email ids and contact numbers so you, you may be getting some email from connectdata.com this is our company as uh, so you can send your query directly on that also or you can note down my uh, direct number you can connect it on the whatsapp you can send your queries directly to me also so 
we can do like this. This is 9625372486. This is my direct number. So you can send your uh, your problems and your questions on that also. This is some of the ideas that we had. The topic that's why the term we hear with it in is the title gets started here. It's AWS Cloud Understanding and Career Options. So this is a basic idea about AWS 